In this video, we'll talk about cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one, so stay tuned till the end and we will get you covered. So, cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells are one category of T cells. So, these T cells take active role in terms of killing the virus infected cells and can also cancer cells, that means tumor cells. So basically, a virus infected cell displays some of the viral peptides accidentally on the class 1 MHC molecule. And that is recognized by the CD8 positive T cells, which further secrete several enzymes that we would talk in a moment. And those enzymes make sure that the virus infected cell is kind of killed. So as the cell is killed, the virus is also eliminated. Very brute force step approach, but very effective. Now, this kind of approach can also be taken in terms of basically cancer cells. Now, cancer cells or any normal nucleated cell would display some self-peptide on the top of class 1 MHC. This is one of their way to say that, okay, everything is fine with me. But this flags goes wrong when by mistake a unique protein, which is not supposed to be present in the normal cell, is displayed on the surface of a tumor cell. These are tumor antigens and that can be recognized by CD8 positive T cell. This cytotoxic CD8 positive T cell then can secrete granules which has enzymes to kill these tumor cells. So moral of the story, these cells play two important roles. One is basically killing virus infected cell. Another is taking active part to eliminate cancer or tumor cells. Now let's zoom into the whole picture. Question is, where does these cytotoxic T cell come from? Where they are born, how they develop, etc. So they all start in the bone marrow. And in the bone marrow, there are hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells, which give rise to lymphoid and myeloid progenitors. And all of these lymphocytes are actually lymphoid progenitor derivatives. So the T cell precursor, which is in the bone marrow, leave the bone marrow and leave to the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, it eventually travels to the thymus. So thymus is kind of like the training school for T cell. Now there are several teachers present in the thymus that is teaching these precursor T cells important life lessons. So if the T cells, which is right now precursor stage, they are not even naive, they are precursor, those T cells, if they basically learn how to recognize class 1 MHC bound peptides, then they would stop expressing CD4 co-receptor and they would start expressing CD8 co-receptor and became, become CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell. But even if they become CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell, so they are still not active. They are naive. That means they hold the degree, but they don't have any job experience and they, they have to learn on the job. So these cytotoxic T cells get activated when they recognize viral particle or tumor antigens on the top of class 1 MHC molecules. And this interaction make them activated. Make uh, So this uh, after this interaction, these cells make a lot of granules with granzymes and perforin. And that literally kills the cell. So basically what happens, we can zoom into this cell and see, let's say a virus has infected the cell. Now virus has injected the genetic material. Eventually many of these virus protein would be synthesized using the host cell machinery. And many of these proteins would be in the vesicles. Sometimes during the normal procedure of MHC packing, some of these viral protein can be packed on top of a class one MHC molecule and that can be recognized by the CD8 positive T cell. And that literally aligns all of the uh, granzyme and perforin secreting vesicles into the cortex of the T cell, as if they're aligning their cannon to fire. So basically they secrete all the, these content of the vesicle, which would eventually kill the cell. But let us zoom into this region and see what really happens. So they secrete vesicles which has perforin and perforin as the name suggests create perforations in the uh, host cell membrane. So these perforins forms a channel through which granzyme can pass in. Now the granzyme that gets in can actually alter mitochondrial membrane permeability and that leads to activation of apoptotic proteins like BID. BID lead to ultimate leak of cytochrome C. Once cytochrome C is in the 
cytosol it might interact with apaf1 and ultimately allow the activation of inactive caspase 3 caspase 3 is the executor caspase one it is once it is activated the game is over that means activated caspase 3 would ultimately initiate the process of destroying the cell side by side fast l and fast mediated pathway can also operate which activates uh, other caspases like caspase 8 caspase 8 activation ultimately boils down to activation of caspase 3 so caspase 3 is basically the executor one caspase 8 and other caspases are the initiator one ultimately the fate of the cell is death by killing the cell it ensures virus doesn't spread in other nearby cell very brute force but very effective now let's talk about exhausted t cells you must be wondering what the shit is this how does cell can get exhausted let just hold your breath you would understand why these exhausted t cells are so important for cancer context so these are cd8 positive t cells so if you look at it in terms of molecular expression surface marker expression they have all the signatures of cd8 positive t cells but they also have some unique signatures which make them different Exhausted CD8 positive T cells would express specific markers like PD1, CTLA4, TIGT, uh, etc. They are also identified by the level of several transcription factor. For example, it would be negative for TCF1, high in UMS and Tibet, uh, low in Tibet. So basically, they lack proliferation capacity and they lack the ab ability to secrete cytokine or kill the cells. So their function is not optimum. That's why the name, exhausted T cells. So this is a normal response curve of a cytotoxic T cell. Let's see there, are, there, there is a antigen exposure. Maybe it's a viral infection. So there is a peak of the infection and the infection is not, after a point of time, it is resolved. And this is a response kinetics of basically T cytotoxic cell. So initially there would be naive cell which would recognize the viral virus particles on class one MHC, they would become effector T cells. Eventually effector T cells would kill those cells. They would then be uh, eliminated and ultimately some of them would form memory cells. This is the normal kinetics. But in case of exhausted T cell, when the antigen exposure is pretty prolonged in that uh, place, the the, the response of the cytotoxic T cells has to be prolonged. And in this prolonged response, they become exhausted. They are not optimally functional anymore. Key points to remember is like CD8 positive T cells are exhausted when the exposure is sustained. For example, imagine a scenario of cancer. The cancer cell, the tumor, they are growing too much. They totally outcompete these cytotoxic T cells. And that's why it's very difficult for the body's immune system to eliminate tumors. So let me tell you, this is basically a tumor. The red cells are basically tumor. So here is a cytotoxic T cell. They literally kill this infected cell. But by the time it killed the infected cell, there are tumor cells which are aggressively proliferating. So there are more and more tumor cells. So how many of these tumor cells can be killed by CD8 positive T cells? And the answer is after a point of time, they reach the point of saturation and they become exhausted. So that is why Scientists thinking, scientists are thinking that can they reverse this exhaustive behavior? And in order to do that, they have to understand why they are exhaustive. So one of the things that we discussed, persistent exposure of antigen makes them exhausted. There could be also other scenarios. For example, chronic inflammation, also negative co-stimulatory signals such as PD-1 and PD-1 ligand mediated co-stimulatory signal, which give the message of T cell to stop. So what if we remove the break? then the system can accelerate all the time. And that's what the idea scientists have. So PD-1 and PD-1 ligand mediated interaction prevents the killing of uh, these tumor cells. Scientists made antibodies which basically block this interaction. The receptor is blocked by these monoclonal antibodies and thereby these T cells cannot be exhausted. Now they can do, do their job without getting exhausted. They gain their superpower. So these are many clinical, advan uh, clinical advances which is happening globally. And I'm really glad to share this with you guys. So overall, what we learned, we learned that cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells are different from T helper cells. Anyway, if you need video on T helper cell, you can click on the I button. T helper cells generally secrete cytokine, the active B cells, they make the B cell to do the job. 
but cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells are very proactive. They do the job themselves. They are the cold blood killers. So I hope this video was useful. So always remember they are required for two contexts, virus elimination and tumor cell elimination. So I hope this was informative enough. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Please share with your friends. And uh, don't forget to support our channel using Super Thanks. Your small contribution is our motivation. See you in the next video.